Well, good morning, everybody. This is Jim Hodson here at the Fort Worth Aviation Museum, home to the most touchable warbirds in Texas. Uh, we have a special guest with us today. I know this is an unannounced uh, video, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, we had this opportunity. And I'd like to introduce Brian Pennington. Brian is a uh, uh, former uh, uh, Navy man, and he has some information about patches, which is firsthand information. And so we thought we would put him on today and, and talk about that a little bit. So, um, Brian, tell us a little bit about your background first. Um, United States Navy, I retired O2 as a Chief Warrant Officer 4. I, uh, uh, I was in uh, Millington, Tennessee at the Naval Air Training Center back in the day between 93 and 96. I was attached to the Naval Air Maintenance Training Group Headquarters. My position there in uh, Tennessee was that I was the helicopter coordinator for maintenance training. And in my space in Tennessee, I shared the room or the space with six of the most impressive Marines that I ever met in my life. And so, the connection that I have here with this great helicopter patches all started with the senior Marine in my office. During that time period, 93 to 96, the transition was taking place of moving the training from Millington, Tennessee to Pensacola. This Marine directly across from me is desk and floating around the uh, the base were takers and disposal list since people were moving some things were going and some things were going away given away or disposed of and so anyway either by word of mouth phone or on the list this marine recognize this Buono on this list and this airplane it was an H-53 this airplane it was part of the Marine Corps helicopter school at the Naval Air Training Technical Training Center and he saw that it was either going to be taken by somebody else or disposed of he jumped up out of his seat and he took off well when when this man finally came back he told me that he was now the owner of this airplane <laughs> okay and so that was just okay <laughs> I mean what do you say and so anyway he was gone for a couple days and what he had done was he had gotten a group of volunteers together Marines young Marines and some of the guys in the office there and they went over and uh, removed that from the training facility and towed it from the net center side of uh, the base across the highway over to our side of the base and behind us was a hangar and they took the airplane to the hangar and so he then went to work single-handedly in taking this airplane down for transportation and shipment and he didn't know what he was going to do with it. But he did come over to the office one day in the middle of all this going on and he says, Master Chief, at that time I was Master Chief. This happened prior to my commissioning to a warrant officer. He came over to me and he says, hey, he says, this, is, this being a Navy of the installation, he says, I need some equipment to help me out and doing what I'm doing. And I said, okay. So I went over and I made all the uh, uh, arrangements and uh, got everything he needed and uh, there was no problem in doing so and from time to time I would just go over with myself or one of the guys in the, in the headquarters whatever would go there and it was just amazing to watch him by himself my turn sure go ahead on this helicopter and he took everything that you see now down yeah when we got the airplane the blades were off uh, the transmission was on, but we had to remove the transmission for transport, and uh, uh, so otherwise it was it was intact. Yes, when when it was uh, when it was uh, 
was when it was uh, made for transportation. The blades were down, the head were down, the transmission was out. It, he took it down single-handedly and palletized and strapped all this stuff down for pallets. And then he came in and he said, he says, Master Chief, I talked to the people at uh, the Naval Air Museum in Pensacola, Florida. And they said they would love to have this airplane if we could provide transportation for it. And so, <laughs> and so I said, okay. And knowing a little bit about a lot of stuff, or anyway, I thought that the only way that I was going to get this done, if I was to help in this process, was to contact with some reserve transportation squadrons, which I did. I, I got a hold of a C-5 unit in Texas that were reserves, and I just casually asked the uh, Chief Master Sergeant if they were looking for some training exercises, and uh, he says, sure, they sure were, because okay. they're tired of doing circles. <clears throat> and so, he said he called me back, so he called me back, and he says, yeah, we can put you on the schedule. And so, that was all great. And so, I believe it was, I believe it was, the Saturday before Thanksgiving of 95 is when I think it actually happened. And so, and I, and I kind of remembered that date because we, my wife and I went to the commissary, loaded up our goods, went over to the hangar, and it was a cold morning, very cold morning. And as scheduled at 11 o'clock, boom, the C-5 was approaching uh, the runway, made his landing. And as he touched down, the sergeant had a train. He had his tow tractor and trailers. <laughs> and here he was on the tow tractor. It was one of the tow tractors that you sit on top sure, of. So sure. it looked, it's almost comical to see it. And this and was it, all at Millington. In Millington. Yeah, okay. He, he pulled out. The C5 came over. They talked. They all got together, loaded this thing up in just a short period of time. Right. And that was it. So this makes the second airplane we've that has been delivered in a C5. This one was taken to Pensacola. Yeah. And our F-14 was brought here in a C-5. So that's that's an interesting part of the story. So then from there it got to Pensacola, and then we acquired it, and we trucked it here. But you also mentioned uh, that you had spoken to people who had been on the airplane when it was hit in Da Nang. Uh, what can you tell us about that? The little bit that I know is that it was hit by an RPG, and that's why it was peppered in Nang patches. But I also was told that there was other damage that they had to put the aircraft down. Okay. And thinking about getting this thing home, they had a way. Well, we need this. We can do without this. And so uh, I think they had some uh, hydraulic uh, lines and maybe even a fuel line that they somehow or another doing battlefield damage repair, which is basically tape and bailing wire. They put this thing together enough to get it off the ground and to get it home. Okay, because we, we've got pictures of it flying after the damage. Yeah. And our information was, and based on the hit pattern on the airplane, yeah. is it was hit on the ground. Yeah. Uh, so, but we know that it flew afterwards. It may have taken place at that yeah. point. Yeah, but we, okay. know it, we knew it flew afterwards because we've, we've seen pictures of it flying after it was hit, and then it was brought back. Now, are you aware of the modifications that were made to this airplane at Millington? Only from your bio. Okay. okay, okay. Because I didn't know anything about this bird okay. or this, this Marine. And what was, what was his name again? That's what I can't remember. Oh, okay, all it right. It wasn't Boyington and it wasn't Byington, but yeah. something in the realm Okay. There. That's all I can remember. But this was a person who was at Millington. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, he was the, he was, uh, actually, he, I think he was the senior guy of the okay. Marines in the room. Okay, cool. But, uh, yeah, my daughter babysat it for him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, uh, 
He was a marine. He was the marine marine. Okay, now you saw him. If I remember right, you said you saw them load it, or you saw the airplane take off after it was loaded. Both. Uh, both. Okay. I stood there for the whole thing. Oh, did you really? Yes. Okay. I took a VHS. That's right. You did mention that. I took a VHS, and I had not recovered it yet because you know with the evolution of technology things right. get packed away and so we're trying we don't throw away anything it's just a matter of finding it well if you find it we can convert it i'm gonna give it to you okay okay we'd <laughs> love to give it to you we'd love to have that because i know you said you saw the, the pre prior videos that we've done on this this is one of the most popular airplanes here because the kids can get in and walk around yeah, in the airplane yeah, yeah. so um so what else can you tell us uh, about the airplane or the stories you've heard about it? Well, that's pretty much it. That's, that okay. A, that was just a, a point in time with this airplane. Okay. That back in 1995, it could have been demolished, salvaged, right. scrapped. Okay. And he saved it. Yeah. <laughs> and with his work by himself and then seeking volunteers when right. needed, got this thing. That's Cola, Florida. Well, that's great. That fills in a gap here because this yes. this is information we didn't know about. Pensacola didn't have a lot for us other than that it had been at Millington and was then at Pensacola. Yeah. And they were looking for a home. It had been at Pensacola for quite a while. Yeah. And they were looking for a home for it. The 53s flew here with the uh, HMH uh, 777. And so that's why the airplane's here. This one didn't fly in that squadron, but these airplanes flew. So there's a connection with these airplanes and uh, aviation here in North Texas. So, um, Brian, I'd like to thank you for your time here this morning. You got something else you want to add? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I just got a question for you. Sure. Where did you get the bio? Did the bio come from Pensacola? It, uh, come, it came primarily from Pensacola, but also from other people. We've had a lot of people that have come through here okay. who trained on this airplane. Oh. You know when they when they went through the uh, the a school at millington okay. and uh, so that's that's where some of the other information came from uh and from uh, what pensacola had on it so so if i could just throw in sure how i got here yeah four weeks ago i i thought it was time for me to go to pensacola to see this airplane because over the time i had looked at look at the satellite views and I could not see this airplane at Pensacola. So I got in my truck and I went to Pensacola on Friday, four weeks ago. I went to the Naval Air Museum and walking through there and talking with all the staff members that I bumped into, I kept asking them, I said, where's this package? I said, where's this airplane? And they all looked at me and said, well, we don't know anything about it. And so finally, I bumped into one of the uh, young ensigns on duty there from the, uh, the officer training school and uh, I told him my dilemma, and he says, wait a minute. He says, uh, the librarian's office is right back here. I said, let's go there. So we went there, and uh, he introduced me to the librarian and the operations manager of the museum in Pensacola. And so I asked him, I says, I'm here to find patches. What happened to the H-53 patches? And he said, I know that airplane. He says, when that airplane arrived here, I was with the group that worked on this airplane and and uh, worked it up for display and i said great i said where is it okay <laughs> and he says that's the good news he said now the bad news is is that we shipped it to hickory north carolina and so i said okay so finished viewing the the museum and because uh, i had been stationary at pensacola too and there's a lot of things going on yeah and so anyway when I got home, I called Hickory, North Carolina Aviation. They have a similar museum. Okay. And I said, hey, where's the 53? He said, we don't have a 53. And I said, have you ever had a 53? No, I had never had a 53. And I said, can you contact me with the, uh, with the airport people? Maybe one came through going to a VFW or some place like that. And uh, which he did. And uh, no, they didn't. And so I then got a hold of uh, the Marine Museum that uh, is going up in Jacksonville, North Carolina. And I spoke with uh, Warren Officer 5, Lisa Potts, who is the operations director there. And uh, she went on a search for me. And uh, we thought we found it in the front of uh, New River, uh, Camp Lujan. Okay. It was not it. And so anyway, I just did a deep, buy, deep dive into the web and uh, found the bio. And from there, it led me to this museum. <laughs> 
Good. <laughs> so good. Just, for me, it was a mission accomplished okay. at that point, except now that I got to find the video, because I want you so bad to have that Oh, video, we'd love to have that. To see that, you know, the C5 coming in. Oh, yeah. Loading up. Love yeah, to have loading that. Loading it up and going away. <laughs> we'd love to have that. And, uh, and uh, everything else I can find on this man that I, I know okay. I have some paperwork. So anyway, here I am. Well, Brian, thanks uh, Thanks for stopping by and getting in touch with us about this. This is going to be a nice little piece to add to the history of this airplane. We like to do that. That helps uh, keep them alive and it makes them even more interesting. So uh, I'd like to thank you again for being here today. And so from, uh, from Fort Worth Aviation Museum, home of the most touchable warbirds in Texas, this is Jim Hodson saying see ya. <laughs>